Hey guys, this is Sidra. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Educate with Sidra. In this video, we will study about the chapter number one of all levels chemistry, that is experimental chemistry. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and click on the bell icon. Now, let us start the video. Uh, the chapter number one, that is experimental chemistry. So we should know the terminologies. What is chemistry? It deals with the composition and properties of substances and forms of matter. It is a scientific study of matter, its properties, interaction with other matters. What does experimental mean? It means that it is based or derived from some experience or any experiment. Experiment, you can say any test or a trial or any procedure, right? Now operators use in this uh, subject, we are using equipment, uh, machinery needed for a particular activity or a purpose. Now physical quantities. We have four physical quantities. Let's, so let's start with the first one, mass. Mass is the amount of matter present in a substance. Its SIA unit is kilogram. Other units are gram, milligram, etc. The apparatus used for the mass is electronic balance and beam balance. Here is a figure. This is beam balance and this is electronic balance. So there is a difference uh, between these two. Uh, in beam balance, accuracy depends upon the user. And uh, no power supply is required in the beam balance. And as far as electronic balance is concerned, uh, it requires power supply and it is easy to use and it's very accurate. Now, next, volume. What is volume? Amount of space a substance occupies. As I say, a unit is meter cube. Other units are centimeter cube, decimeter cube. In Pakistan, we are using liter, milliliter. Uh, Additors used for this is gas syringe, burette, pipet, volumetric flask. Here is a figure. Like uh, this is a measuring cylinder. This is a big measuring cylinder. This is a small one. This is a conical flask. This is a beaker. This is a pipette. This one is pipette. And this one is burette. So next uh, is uh, temperature. Okay. Now the question arises, how should we read the volume of a liquid? Uh, if you are reading for a concave meniscus in a burette and if you are reading from a convex meniscus in a burette. So you can see the figure. So you have to keep the eye on the, if you are using the concave men meniscus uh, like this, this one. And if you, are, if you are reading from a convex meniscus, you have to read the reading on, on from this side right this one okay next is temperature temperature is the degree of a hotness or coolness of a body its unit is kelvin and the other units are degree centigrade and degree fahrenheit now apparatus used for the temperature is thermometer now next is uh, time. What is time? Time is a very precious thing. You know this thing, right? So uh, I don't need to define notice time, right? Time uh, unit is second. Other units are uh, hour, minute, etc. Apparatus uses stopwatch. This is a stopwatch. This is a figure, right? Now next is unit conversion. Okay, let's start unit conversion. Okay, degree centigrade, we are taking the temperature for degree centigrade is equal to Kelvin minus 273. Then uh, Kelvin obviously is equal to the degree centigrade plus 273. We will do the numericals later. I will make another video for that. Uh, okay, here we are converting the, uh, we are taking the unit conversion. So now let's take a mass. Uh, the unit of mass as we have already discussed is uh, gram, kilogram, Right, so we should know 1 kg is equal to how many grams? Just think about it. It tends to power 3 or you can say 1000, right? Okay, now 
uh, what is the relationship between mg and gram? 1000 mg is equal to 1 gram. Okay. And if you are taking tan, then it, uh, 1000 kilogram is equal to 1 ton. Okay. Now, uh, this is a... Uh, uh, this is about mass now we are taking about the volume right for the volume is uh, the unit is the meter cube centimeter cube you know this thing right okay thousand centimeter cube is equal to one decimeter cube okay and one decimeter cube is equal to one liters okay now uh, and what is the relationship between the decimeter cube and the meter cube? 10 is to the power 3 or you can say 1000 decimeter cube is equal to 1 meter cube. Right? So, this is the relation between uh, decimeter cube and meter cube. Now, let's take uh, time. Uh, time, you know this thing. 1 minute uh, is equal to how much second you know this thing, right? 10, 60 seconds, right? And 1 hour. 1 hour is equal to 3600 seconds and we have already discussed the temperature so we all we have discussed in this uh, we have discussed that unit conversion of temperature mass volume and time okay now now we are uh, discussing the topic uh, solubility, right? Solubility. Okay. So uh, we have discussed this thing that uh, what is solubility? It basically is how the soluble the gas is in water, right? Uh, it depends. Uh, it has two things, uh, right? Insoluble in water. insoluble in water or soluble in water right if it is uh, if the substance is soluble in water then if the gas is soluble in water then we have to check the density of that thing right we have to check the density right and if it is uh, insoluble in water then it is collected the gas is collected by the uh, over water collection right that is we can say displacement of water displacement of water right or you can say over water collection and if uh, it is soluble in water then we have to check the density if uh, the, then in density there are two main things again right uh, denser than air or less denser than air right Less denser than air, you can say lighter uh, than air, right? Lighter than air. And the second thing is uh, denser than air. If it is denser uh, than air, then the gas is collected by the downward delivery. And if the gas is lighter, if the density of the gas is lighter than air, then it will be collected by the upward delivery. Upward delivery. Right? So, this is about uh, the solubility. I repeat it again. If you, uh, the solubility is how the soluble the gas is in water, right? If the gas is uh, insoluble in water or soluble in water. If the gas is insoluble in water, then it will be collected by the displacement of water. We will discuss it in the next slide. And if it is soluble in water, then it, we have to check the density first, right? Either it is denser than air or lighter than air. If it is denser than air, then it will be collected by the downward delivery. And if it is lighter than air, then it will be collected by the upper delivery. Okay, let's uh, start uh, the displacement of water. We have already discussed this thing that we have three methods for collecting gases. Displacement of water, downward delivery and upper delivery. So, let's uh, start with the figure. 
uh displacement of water you can see this thing the gas is going inside the test tube that is a delivery tube sorry this is a delivery tube and is going uh, in the uh, gas jar so this is the way uh, we collect the gas through the displacement of water for the downward delivery uh, look at this figure how we collect the gas uh, through downward delivery and for the upper delivery uh, this is what is the figure for that now the next is table in the table we are discussing which gas is uh, having uh, soluble uh, in water insoluble in water density and is the method of collection right so in this uh, you can see this thing hydrogen is insoluble in water so and it is less dense oxygen is slightly soluble and it is slightly denser carbon dioxide is slightly soluble and it is more denser so these three are collected by the uh, displacement of water okay now uh, chlorine gas hydrochloric acid sulfur dioxide uh, these are soluble or very soluble in water and they are more denser uh, as compared to air so it is collected by the downward delivery ammonia is extremely soluble it is less than it is collected by the upward delivery so these are the gases so we should know which gas is soluble in water which gas is denser than air or uh, is less denser than air and what is the method of collection of uh, that gas right so we should know this thing so you have to memorize this table right now the question arises a gas should be passed through a gas wash uh, bottle before collecting it right so there are two main reasons for that number one reason is the gas may contain impurities like uh, it may contain impurities right that which will dissolve in water for example traces of uh, hcl may be present when hydrogen uh, gas is made uh, by reacting with zinc and dilute hcl right because you know this thing zinc plus hcl it will give you the cl2 and hydrogen gas right you can balance it here right so hydrogen gas uh, may be released right so uh, this uh, the gas may contain impurities which will dissolve in water so this is the one uh, reason and the other reason is uh, and in this uh, but uh, but you have to take care that, uh, of this thing that, right uh, hydrochloric acid and ammonia are soluble in water right so you have to take care of this thing right okay the next reason is uh, the gas may be required dry, right? It may require dry. So it is passed through a gas bottle containing concentrated sulfuric acid. So uh, concentrated sulfuric acid uh, is important, right? Care should be taken if ammonia, uh, if you are collecting the gas ammonia because uh, ammonia can react with sulfuric acid okay now uh, we have uh, started two main reasons for this uh, question now the next is, thing is drying a gas for drying sometimes we need to dry a gas so a drying agent is needed right to dry a gas we need a drying agent right and the drying agent are three acid it may be acid it may be salt it may be an alkali right if it is an acid, so we have an acid of um, uh, sulfuric, concentrated sulfuric acid. Acid uh, as a drying agent, we use concentrated sulfuric acid. Right? For, and uh, for which gases? For chlorine gas. For collecting chlorine gas. And... Uh, and acid hydrochloric acid not for ammonia because it reacts with ammonia right okay the next uh, is the drying agent is salt and which salt we are using calcium chloride this is the figure of that right cacl2 and we are taking it uh, fused uh, as heated calcium chloride is used to remove all the uh, it will remove all the traces of water that's why we are using uh, fused calcium uh, chloride okay uh, next is um, 
and alkali or we can say uh, sub base alkali is uh, quick lime calcium oxide cao or you can use calcium hydroxide as well caoh whole twice okay it is used uh, for ammonia gas for nh3 gas and the figure is this okay for the drying agent uh, we have three things acid salt and alkali if we are using acid so for the collection of uh, chlorine gas and hydrochloric acid we have to use acid sulfuric acid concentrated as a drawing agent right you can see the diagram we this is filled with the concentrated uh, sulfuric acid and a moist SCL is going down and uh, is uh, now the sulfuric acid acts as a drawing agent then the what will come out is the dry SCL in the next we have uh, started uh, uh, salt that is calcium chloride moist hydrogen gas is going down into the fuse calcium chloride and dry hydrogen is out okay alkali is calcium oxide or calcium hydroxide used for collecting ammonia you can see this thing it is quick lamp is filled here and moist ammonia is going inside and dry ammonia is coming out right so these are the methods and these are the drawing agents for collecting different gases right we cannot use uh, for the collection of ammonia we cannot use acid sulfuric acid because you have to take care of this thing because ammonia can react with sulfuric acid we have already discussed in the previous uh, uh, slide right so you have to take care of these uh, few things right that's why we have three dying agent for different gases thank you for watching please subscribe like and comment